solid fact, only hearsay and conjecture, about Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn. Was she a scheming siren, a witch, a wanton who intrigued her way to Henry's side? Or a much maligned, courageous woman whose inability to produce a male heir for England was the sole cause of her destruction. King Henry, would you look at this list of names? Norris, Brereton, Weston. What are they, Ma? Where did you get this list, Norfolk? From Lord Cromwell. And what do they signify? It is with horror that I answer you, Your Majesty. These are men who have intimately known Anne Boleyn. When she was Anne Boleyn, or when she was my wife, the Queen. When she was the Queen, Your Majesty. Our mystery drama, Murder by Decree, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agatha Jr., and stars Marion Selby. We have changed some historical names and kept others to protect both the guilty and the innocent. I shall return shortly with that one. We take you to a time when primogeniture was on the mind of most sovereigns. The custom was that the eldest son shall inherit the crown, or in exceptional cases, the eldest daughter. And when he wasn't in the tilt yard, jousting, it certainly was on the mind of Henry VIII. It is January 1536, and his second wife, Anne Boleyn, is about to give birth, she hopes, to a son. Her old and valued lady-in-waiting, Lady Rosalind, enters the royal bedchamber. Good morning, Your Majesty. It is cold without, but the sun is shining. You are up and fully dressed. Good day to you, Rosalind. Perhaps my child will be born on a sunny day. I hope. Oh, I hope. It was a difficult night, Your Majesty. All of England prays for the child of Anne Boleyn. It will have much meaning for the court. And for me? To endure so many miscarriages... If I fail again, what will Henry say? What will he feel? Disappointed, but no more than you. Oh, Rosalind, you accept so much. But how can I explain my fears? Henry becomes more and more anxious with each passing day. That's why I arose early this morning. I wanted to talk to him, to assure him that all was well. But he had already left for the jousting. Men tilting one another from their horses. Oh, it worries me. I wish he wouldn't. Men are like children when they put on armor and climb on horses. But he's jousting with men half his age, who've trained for long hours. It's really much too dangerous for a king. He's 45. How long may he expect to live? He acts like 20. But he's not. At the most, he'll live to 55. His father, Henry VII, Died at 52. Henry the sixth, 50. Why hasten death with that silly sport? Oh, and Henry the fifth? Died at 35. It was the battle against the French that killed him. And it will be the battle against swordsmen quicker than Henry. Half his weight. Your Majesty shows much concern. Oh, I love that man. I love him dearly with all my heart. And I regard those tournaments of men on horseback with lances and all stupid sport, proving nothing, risking everything. You know those lances can catch you anywhere. And one can take a terrible fall and be crushed inside one's armor. My dear, the king does not believe the Lord will permit any harm to come to him. Yes, but supposing at the moment Henry is charging his adversary. But the Lord happens to be looking the other way. And and that's not possible. The impossible happens always in England. The Pope excommunicating Henry for divorcing Catherine. Why, in the eyes of Rome, I'm not even married to Henry. Do you think our Lord approves of such goings-on? What I'm saying is, 
If Henry is killed before my child is born... And you are a widow without having become a wife. Or at least a mother. If Henry dies first, I'd be set aside. And his daughter by Catherine would inherit the throne. Not I. But she, a woman, has never been king in our history. Well, there's always a first time. I can see England ruled by a queen in the future. Why not? Oh, oh, my lady, oh, my, my lady, my lady, oh. I think it is time. No, no, it's just, just a twinge. Oh. Could, it, could it be the start of labor? Pray for me. Pray for me and my child, Rosalind. And pray he's a boy. I'll go to the chapel this afternoon. Perhaps I should go with you. And say prayers for Henry's safety. Henry, enough is enough. Uh, You've run eight courses and unseated every opponent. No, no, Hook, not yet. One more course. That will make it an even nine. And nine is my lucky number. Well, that's us. I see my man. He's about to charge. Henry, your highness, I beg you. I know the man. It's the Black Knight. Oh, is he? Oh, good. Let go of my face, Robert. Let go, I say. Come, help me. The king has been thrown from his horse. He's not moving. The helmet's been knocked off. He's staying wide. I'm really seeing him by the shoulders. Yes. You follow me, and we'll have him out of the court. Yes. No, I have him. No, I have him. Slowly now. Slowly. Yes. Yes. Why did I let him run this course one last yes. time? Yes. Why did you, your grace? Henry insisted. He said nine was his lucky number. Queen for a afternoon prayer. Where is she? Inside the chapel, still at prayer. I- I've just come out to make certain the carriage was ready to take us back to the palace. How is she? Um. Yes. How is she? Sometimes in great pain because of the coming baby, but she's been very careful to avoid any strain that might have, as in the past, produced the other miscarriage. I cannot decide. What would be the best place to give her the news? Oh, the king. Yes. Certainly I cannot tell her as we stand here on the steps of the chapel. Perhaps I should wait until she has returned to her chambers. May I ride back to Hampton with you? Oh, no. She would suspect something immediately. The king has been hurt. Indeed. Oh, my lord. Mortally. Seriously. You cannot tell her here. You simply cannot. Anne is in such a nervous state. She she could not cope with the distressing news. She's been like that since her last miscarriage. She won't weep. She won't cry. She she bursts into uncontrollable laughter. The news of Henry's accident had better wait. She cannot. I must tell her. I've been ordered to. And I must return to him. He's still flat on his back. Henry needs... No, but he's that you. What did you just say? Your Majesty. Oh, no, but... The look off your knees makes me feel ridiculous. What is it? What were you just saying about Henry? Why are you here? Oh, it's not true. No, it's not. Tell me it's not so. He's been hurt. Oh, oh, oh. Rosalind... Rosalind, help me. I'm so Your Majesty. Today he ran eight courses. Yes. Won them all. But you see, during the night, he was tilted from his horse. He is all right now. Please believe me. <laughs> the doctors have all the way to him and he's resting comfortably. Oh, your Grace, Your Grace, the supporter. Let, let's see if we can bring her over to the bench behind the head. Come along, lady. Come along. Hold on to me. I knew I should have waited. It's cruel to tell her so much at this time. Why did I? Oh, I'm better now. I can... Oh, I can disregard these pains. If I can know the truth. The moment you said Henry had been hurt, Thomas, 
I just feel this wrench in my body that I've never felt before. Henry sent me here especially, Anne. We'll show you. How badly is he hurt? My lady, I told you he is all right now. But what happened? I want the truth and all of it. His majesty had completed eight jousts, and one each tilted his adversaries to the ground and scored. <laughs> it is a ninth. He himself was unseated, and he fell heavily to the ground. Oh. We carried him to the royal tent, removed his armor. Oh, God. <laughs> Need I continue? Oh, yes, please, please go on. <laughs> I had all the doctors at Henry's side within moments, <laughs> and it took them some two hours before he, before he could be... Brought back to consciousness. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, please, Anne, Anne, please stop that. No, stop that this minute. She's hysterical. Shall I fetch some more? No, no, no. It does no good. Your Grace, when she's in this state, nothing can be done to bring her out of it until finally the shock wears off. Anne, my dearest Anne, it's all right. Henry is not in danger anymore. He is resting and well. Rosalind speaks the truth. <laughs> I must leave you now and return to him. Yes, thank you, too. Oh, Ross, may we go home? I feel very, very ill. I uh, Rosalind, grieve not. Tis the Lord's will. So great. How could he be so cruel to her? When did labor begin? Yesterday, after you left us at the chapel. Was the infant actually born? Yes. Born dead. The fourth try. It is cruel. I hope she will have the courage to try again. If she's permitted to. Permitted? What does that mean? Aren't you aware of the youngest lady in waiting here? Oh, Jane Seymour. The king isn't serious about her, is he? I thought it was a mild flirtation during Anne's pregnancy. No, it's more than that. Has she been told yet about the boy? The midwives have just gone to a chamber to tell her. I must go in to be with her. Please, give her my deepest regret. Of course I shall, Your Grace. No, Hulk! No, Hulk, are you in the Queen's antechamber? Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, what, what is that screaming all about? The Queen's, Your Majesty. Uh, not again. The midwives are with her now. Uh, it's over with, is it? A son, Your Majesty. Born dead. Dead, eh? Uh, useless. Useless. I know how deeply you feel this loss. Yes, well, you're quite mistaken. I don't feel a thing. Are you going in to see her? Yes, when it suits me. Not before. May I venture a suggestion, Henry? Yes, yes, venture away, Thomas. There's nothing gained whether we venture or not. I was talking to the French doctor at the court of Francis the First. Yes, indeed. He, he, he's been aware, of course, of the Queen's many miscarriages. And it is his learned opinion that if... If your royal highness could, uh... Well, well, could what? Could what? Well, <laughs> this is a little difficult to put into words. Oh, Thomas Rubbish. But Thomas Norfolk, the highest voice in Britain, the greatest admiral... Well, a man who defied Wolsey and spoke up for my divorce from Catherine? Oh, no, no. Nothing is too difficult for you to say. Henry, mm. if you could refrain from exerting your marital rights with the Queen for six months after a miscarriage or a deceased baby, the next child would be born and live. Uh, yes, well, no. The weeping and wailing seems to have subsided in there, so I shall enter the Queen's bedchamber. Will you be kind to her, Henry? I will be patient. I will not remonstrate. But as for kindness, may I suggest when next to attend chapel, ask the Lord himself, is he being kind to me? <laughs> father to son was as crucial to all of Europe as it was to England. So long as men believe in the divine right of kings, the end of a royal line was the greatest tragedy that could befall any country. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Thank you.
saddest day in the life of Anne Boleyn. Once again, she has been unable to give birth to a child that lives. See her face, tears stained upon the pillow, embroidered with the crest of the falcon, a bird whose wings are clipped even as those of Anne. The second, but not the last wife of Henry VIII. You, you may leave us, Lady Rutland. The king and I wish to be alone. Yes. Yes, indeed. The queen and I seem fated to remain alone. Uh, somewhere in this castle, someone is giving birth. I hear the cry of delivery as I mount the stairs. One of the ladies in waiting, perhaps, or the wife of a groom, a scullery maid. But not the wife of a king. Uh, Lady Rosalind, who may leave us all alone. If there is anything you desire... I am outside the door, my lady. Then please do not listen. I have no need to listen, your majesty. I understand your grief and would not intrude upon it. Henry, I haven't seen you since the tournament. You suffered a terrible fall, I was told. I ordered Norfolk to tell you it was nothing. My leg caught in a stirrup and I became unbalanced. But my love, I was so worried. You have no idea. Well, I'm sorry if the news troubles you. Norfolk told me immediately he left you went into labor. I suffered a great deal. For how long, I don't know. A day, a week. I don't know why the baby was so hard to deliver. Yes, indeed. I had lucid moments, then I'd fall asleep. And, and then the baby and you all came together in my thoughts. I'd see you lying on the jousting field or in the tilt yard with no one to help you. Oh, come, come now. It was not that bad. Two hours? Unconscious. Not that bad. What would I have done if it had been your last breath? Hmm. Return to what you were. Anne Boleyn, daughter of Sir Thomas, gentleman of the bedchamber. Well, not every woman can remain a queen. But I am a queen. While I live. Your voice is so peevish, Henry. No, it is indeed. I waited years and years for a son. Is it too much to ask that the Tudors be allowed to reign? And is that all I am? A breeder of Tudors? And an unsuccessful one, yes. What happened to us, Henry? What happened to the love we shared? Well, we still share, my dear. We still do. No, I don't mean at public functions. I hear about... You and others. Well, I like women. I have never denied it. Oh, it's hard for me to talk to you when you're like this. But a child, a, a boy, that would bring our love to life. That soothsaying saying and the soothsayers sayers have been wrong half a dozen times. But I'm as sorry as you well, are. Well, I'm sorry too, yes. I am disappointed, yes. And I am angry, yes. All about me, other kings are preparing their sons to do battle against the day when England has no male heir. I swear to you, Anne, that day will never come if I have to wed and bed every woman in this land. I am told you have already begun. And I have never stopped you, she devil. Well, I see clearly that the Lord does not wish to give me a male heir by you. You make me say things, Henry, that were better left unsaid. I lie here in shame and disillusion, unrealized hope, and my heart breaks, knowing that you love another. I have no more to say. But I shall get well soon, and the next time there will be a boy. And how many next times is a king supposed to endure? Well, it was not all my fault. Oh, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, whose fault was it then this time? Well, it was I, one uh... came to tell me of your accident, but you lay hardly breathing for two hours. It turned my insides upside down and my little boy with it. Oh, yes, yes, I see. So that's the fault of my dusting. I couldn't bear the thought of you injured. I ached with pain. I cried out I had to be restrained. It could not have been the easiest of times for our son within me. Well, 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 I'll grant you that. But it is the last time a son of mine will occupy that space. You shall have no more boys by me. Are you going away again? Yes, to Westminster. I will speak to you again when you have recovered. Oh, we mean, Norfolk. Do you know 
know what Anne had the nerve to say to me. Henry, calm yourself. How to put it mildly, Le Montesté, huh? <laughs> I made that woman, and I can break her. I was forced to marry her. You'd have me believe that? Yes, yes, a sorcery bewitched me, but it's all over. Over and done with. It's because of young Jane Seymour, isn't it? Well, might be. She's a charming creature. I won't be punished if I marry her, I can assure you of that. Your Majesty, who has punished you? Who would dare? For a wise man, you talk like a fool. A man is denied a son. Is that not the Lord's displeasure and anger? Well, I shall marry a third time and please him and myself. To be realistic, Henry, do you think a second divorce is possible? Well, it had better be. I shall consult Cromwell. He did very well the first time. I've got responsibilities. I must marry a woman who can produce a son. <laughs> feel a thousand times stronger. How long has it been since we began these morning walks? A month. Six weeks. Well, I've regained my strength. And thanks to you, I've stopped feeling sorry for myself. What's that? He's shining up there in the car? Hmm? Oh, oh it's only, only a locket. Don't put it away. Let me see. Well, it, it, it belongs to the uh, Duchess of Norfolk, I'm certain. Tell his wife. Oh. This is beautifully made. But I've never seen her wear it. Oh, it's completely covered in these seed pearls. It's expert. I see she gets it back, Your Majesty. I'm dying to see what's inside. Ah, now, got it open. Rosalind. This locket does not belong to the Duchess. Who is it? Please don't ask me. You have seen it on the neck of one of my ladies in waiting. No. No, I haven't. Oh, tell me. I, I don't know, Your Majesty. Uh, have you noticed, Rosalind, that when you wish to keep something from me, you call me Your Majesty? And all other times, I'm just plain Anne. This locket belongs to Jane Seymour, doesn't it? Jane Seymour? You heard me well. Jane Seymour? My youngest lady in waiting. Anne, I beg you, don't let it upset you. It doesn't. Not in the slightest. I have known for some time that Henry's roving eye has settled upon little Miss Seymour. <laughs> oh, it's rich, isn't it? <laughs> My dear. Rich, really rich. My dear, please. <laughs> oh, he sees her wherever I am. Oh, yes. Hampton Court, St. James, Westminster. And there's nothing I can do about it. At least when she's in my service, I know her whereabouts. If I let her go, Henry will see her in secret elsewhere. Oh, what a laughing stock I must be for the court. <laughs> well, take the bauble. Give it to the girl. <laughs> I wish her every unhappiness with it. And I shall speak to Thomas Norfolk about this. He has great influence with Henry. Perhaps he can make him realize how unhappy these events are making you. I haven't come here, Your Grace, at an inopportune time. Rosalind, you're too old a friend for it to be inopportune. Maybe our conversation will have to be brief. I'm expecting Thomas Cromwell momentarily. This locket. It was picked up in the gardens at Greenwich. It belongs to Jane Seymour. It was found by Her Majesty, and it is a gift to Jane Seymour from the king. What do you wish me to do? Could you call this overt indelicacy to his attention? What? Remonstrate with his majesty because he chooses to give a gift to the Seymour woman? What in heaven's name could I say? That it distresses the queen. Oh, no. He'd regard that as less majesty. High impertinence. In fact, were I you, I would caution her not to press Henry too far. He's already asked me to consult Cromwell to find grounds... For an annulment. I will tell her so, and warn her to be wise and hold her peace. Here's the locket. Will you return it to Jane Seymour? What do you say, Cromwell? It is very serious. Then you agree. 
Uh, the problem is, Norfolk, that had Anne Boleyn given birth to a son, there would have been no problem. Uh, what is that bauble in your hand, Norfolk? A locket belonging to Lady Jane. Ah, well, she was waiting outside when I came in. Uh, why don't we have her in? No. She may give us an inkling on how to approach this ticklish subject. Jameson, have Miss Seymour come into the tower room. Uh, no, no, Norfolk. There is no way for Henry to obtain another divorce. After all, this is England. You bid me enter, Your Grace? Yes, Lady Jane, I did. Lord Cromwell, Lady Jane, you care to put a few questions to her? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Uh, why don't you dispense with the locket? I believe this belongs to you. Why, yes. Well, where is it found? In one of the gardens. I would like to caution you to be more careful in the future. The Queen found it. Rosalind? Jane? Where is everybody? Oh, she's followed me here. What shall I do? Uh, I do not wish to see the Queen or be seen by her. Norfolk, get word to me so that we can meet elsewhere. His Majesty is concerned and anxious. Rosalind, are you in the tower room? I shall leave by the back stairs. Why don't anyone answer me? What is all this secrecy? Nothing secret at all. I was just having a conversation with one of your ladies in waiting. But didn't I just see Thomas Cromwell disappearing down the back stairs? Cromwell? Norfolk and Seymour. What are you three plotting? Nothing, you Majesty. You keep quiet. I'll deal with you in a moment. Your Majesty, there is no plotting whatsoever. Cromwell asked to see me. At the same time, I asked Lady Jane Seymour to come in so I could... Uh, I could, uh... Return that filthy trinket I see on a gold chain about her neck? How dare you wear that in my presence? Oh. Take it off or I shall pull it off. I will not. It's mine. Oh! oh. Sorry, I broke the chain and not your neck. Could you get that back to me? I want you to have a look at this locket. Open it up. Come on, please do. Now tell me, whose face is that staring out at you? I, uh... I don't know. But you know, well, I know. And Jane knows. You give it back to me. I had it made. You have no right. I am the queen. And I have no right. Did you hear that, Norfolk? So, you had what is inside this locket made, did you, Lady Jane? You employed the court painter, did you? To paint the miniature for you? Norfolk, wouldn't you say it is quite an accurate representation of my husband? And the artist, none other than the great Holbein himself, wouldn't you say? You had Holbein paint the king's miniature for you, Lady Jane? Oh, you liar, you hussy. It's <laughs> not my fault. This is the king gave it to oh, me. Oh, did he now? And what did you give him? Oh, please, please, let me know. Anne, Anne, no, what the devil is going on here? I'm telling you, you husband, steal her. Your Majesty, please, I beg of you. Anne, Anne, take your hands from that girl. Copy, I say. Stamp. Oh. Well, that's better. Jane, go. Go on. Go to your quarters. He is right. Oh, yes. As usual, Henry is right. It is not my job to choke the vixen to death. I'll have her snuffed out by experts. Henry, I want Jane Seymour taken to the Tower of London immediately. I am sorry, my girl, but that is impossible. There is someone else who will have to be placed in the Tower first. Is there? Well, who might that be? You, my dear Henry. But for the present, I ask that you be at peace. Norfolk, there's Cromwell. Find him and fetch him. I want the both of you in my private chambers within the hour. We have a great deal to talk about. Henry and Cromwell did have much to talk about. For it was Cromwell who circumvented the Pope by establishing the royal supremacy over the church and advancing the Reformation. But on the way to help Henry, heads will have to roll. Lives forfeited to the whims of the times. More when we return with Act Three.
It is unthinkable that the two de Lange should stop because no male heir exists. You are Henry VIII, King of England. What do you do? You set the problem before the most powerful man in the country, who for reasons of honor and state, spins a web of lies, so that legally your fruitless wife can be murdered. The Duke of Norfolk and Thomas Cromwell start hatching the plot. Cromwell, what options do we have so that Henry can divorce Anne and find himself a woman who will bear him a son? We have none. Not one alternative, Thomas. Divorce or annulment are out of the question. Only one plan remains. Anne must be discredited, find treasonable, and die under the axe. Then Henry, a widower, can marry whom he pleases. Which means Jane Seymour, for she is the only woman who pleases him. And when? As quickly as possible, so that Henry appears as the injured party. Henry dishonored? But that would mean... Yes. It does. Anne Boleyn must be proven adulterous. Once proved, the battle is won. Not because adultery is ground for divorce, but illicit intrigue against the king. It's treason. How will you find witnesses? Or traitors? Well, those who cannot be frightened with threats will be bought. Do you really think Henry will believe that of his wife? <laughs> if I believe it, he will. I shall be shocked, amazed, and grieved. The rest will follow. And where to begin? Mm -hmm. I think with the person closest to the Queen, Lady Rosalind. She will not falsify evidence against Anne. She will. I shall wait her on it. No, Amy. Oh, no, no. no I didn't say that. But she will talk, nevertheless. Lady Rosalind. It has come to my attention that the Queen has not always been as uh, circumspect about her behavior as propriety would demand. That's untrue. She has always been meticulous in her treatment of those at court, carefully avoiding those who would make overtures. Hmm. Well, have you been present when such overtures were made? Sometimes. They may be the same names offered to me, uh, the ones you speak of. A harmless overtures, of course. But which ones would you think, Lord? I don't think it's my place to name for you. Those who the Queen may find troublesome. Yes, true, true. But still... It seems to me, Lord Cromwell, you would do better by asking Her Majesty directly if anyone has given her offense. Well, if indeed the intentions were as harmless as you would have me believe. I find it strange you refuse to give me that name. Now, why are you being secretive, Lady Roslyn? Whom are you protecting? If this were not so ridiculous, I should be angry. Who, indeed? Do you wish me to name every foreign ambassador who has ever complimented Her Majesty? Only those of our court, if you please. Sir Henry Norris is an admirer, mm -hmm. and has said so quite openly. The king encouraged him. Norris is the king's favorite. Mm -hmm. Sir William Brereton, Sir Francis Weston, shall I, shall I go on? All admirers of the queen openly expressed. Norris, Brereton, Weston, and what of those who are perhaps not peers? I simply do not understand the purpose of all this. Uh, Lady Rosalind, may I have the answer to my last question? Nobleman? Or not so noble. Who else? Oh, yes. One day when we had returned from exercising the dogs in the park, there was Mark Smeaton standing in the Queen's presence chamber. Smeaton? The musician? Yes. He has always complimented Anne. I rather think he's in love with her. Ah? Why do you say that? Oh, poor boy. You know he has an excellent voice. And he would compose ballads which she would have him sing to her. I think a bit of his heart went into them. Ah, uh -huh. me to know. And anyone else? Lord Cromwell, I should be most embarrassed if any word of our conversation happened to reach the ears of the Queen. It's all so innocent, and I'm not even sure she is aware she's being complimented. You won't say anything to her, will you? You have my word, my lady. 
see those names on that fool's cap in your own hand, Cromwell. But I still cannot believe it. The list speaks for itself. My heart is broken. The next move is yours, Norfolk. The king must be told. Yes, I know, I know. I'll do it now. Speak to you later. Jameson. Yes, Your Grace? We're going to the royal chamber. Hold your taper high and open the doors. Thomas, is that you? Yes, Henry. Uh, oh, uh, Norfolk. Hey, well, what, what is that list you're holding? Now? Another cross, I'm afraid, Henry. One so very heavy, I wish I were not the bearer. You sound disturbed, Thomas. Would you please look at these names, Your Majesty? Oh, right. Morris, Norris, Weston. Where? Where did you get this list? From Lord Cromwell. Cromwell? And why has he written down these names? It is with horror that I answer you. These are the names of those who have intimately known Anne Boleyn. When she was Anne Boleyn? Or when she was the queen? When she was queen. Oh! Oh, I can't bear it! I can't bear the thought! Oh, that woman! That woman! You knew of this. No, no, no. I never dreamed such a thing, Henry. Never. Yes, of course. The days, the weeks when I was away adjusting, or at the hunt. Yes, she had all the opportunity. How learned Cromwell of this? Inquiries through a personal maid, the ladies in waiting, I believe. Oh, the lies, the cheating. What does Cromwell advise? To have these men arrested. Oh, yes, 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 of course, of course, naturally, quickly, and without ado. Arrest them! Torture them! I'll have them drawn and quartered. Oh, oh, how could she, how could she? And when she would say, oh, be careful, Henry, you are 45 years old, do not risk yourself a joust, she would have me believe it was her concern, her love for me. Yes, I see it all now. It wasn't that she feared danger to my life. She hoped it... Oh! Oh, how easily I was taken in. I am a broken man, Thomas. Who is my friend anymore? They all deny it. But they are now in the tower, thinking it over. Yes, all of them, every single one of that list, huh? What of them? She has not yet been told. Not a whisper. Not a rumor. She knows nothing, huh? It's the talk of all London. What the Queen may have overheard, I couldn't say. Yes, well, you and Cromwell will break the news to her today. Charge her with adultery and have her taken to the car. Today? This minute! I don't know how to answer these charges. Are these words. Have you brought them to me from Henry himself? His orders were you were to be told this morning. There is a puzzle here, a nightmare of sorts from which I shall presently awaken. When Henry sent you both to me with these accusations, oh, how did he say it? I just... With hatred? With, with, with sorrow? With both hatred and sorrow. Hatred for the treachery and sorrow for the loss of you. But it's some kind of a trick to test me. Henry doesn't believe this, and I shall be vindicated. I know he doesn't believe it. We've been through too much together, side by side, against the church, against Catherine of Aragon, against false courtiers. Oh, Cromwell, I beg you, carry this message back to my husband. No. Carry nothing back. Take me to him. Take me now. I'll go to the tower as soon as I have talked to him. Your Majesty, that is not possible. But he's my husband. I am the Queen. Dearest lady, you are the Queen. But we are faced with English law. We must bow to it. But there is no law more powerful than the king and queen. They are the law. Let me explain, Anne. 
Those accused of high treason cannot be received by the king until their innocence is proved. I will speak to your ladies in waiting, and at two o'clock you will board the barge to take you to the tower. conclusion that for reasons of state, the second wife of Henry VIII was murdered by decree. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Earl Hammond, Carol Titel, and Bernard Grant. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.